Hi, good afternoon, welcome to Tuesday. Um, seems a little bit weird that I'm come so quickly uh, round to being me again. So um, you've got two days of Sarah. Uh, she's on crea Create and Craft um, Extra tomorrow between one and three, which is always a good one because she always gets an extra um, um always gets extra for uh demonstration purposes so that's really good and then she's on 7 and 11 i believe on thursday on mainstream create craft so um so we we i'm here today so that you at least get some of me i mean why would you not want to so hello everybody they were all popping up. There's Leslie and, and Carolyn and Kate and Jacqueline. I had a lovely birthday, thank you very much. And Claire, Cheryl, Melba, and uh, I sang croaky. <coughs> <coughs> no, I'm not. Um, I might have a bit of a frog in my throat, but um, no, I'm fine. It might be not, perhaps I'm not talked enough today. Um, so yeah. So we're going to start with, we have two giveaways today. One is our um, raffle that you all uh, kindly partook, partook of. Um, so this one was £5 a ticket and it was £300 worth of goodies. Uh, I have no idea what they are, um, but uh, we put put it up for you later and um, send it off if need be. And then we have the two from the block that Sarah set a thingy on. So I picked up a penny before I came out. So we are going to um, go over to number two, which I think is the overhead, so that you can see as I do this. Okay. So, here we go. We are going to scratch this off here. <gasps> it begins with an S. So, if you've got an S, then you will be able to see. It's a Stephen. So, well, I'm in a bit of a Steve. Sue Halliday. Well done, Sue. So, we will be in touch with you later. Um... For you to choose your fabric so have a look on the website and see what fabrics you want um i think it's six meters instead of three this time or is it normally for i don't know um i'm not even going to try and 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 guess so um we'll be in touch with you well done sue so that's number one done so this one here is for an Untucket summer um, thingy. This was, you all came up with names. And uh, so we are going to pull a name and of what you decide, I um, don't, it doesn't say what you decided it was, but our winner for entering and uh, trying to come up with a name is Louise Clifton. So well done, Louise. So you have a charm pack coming towards you. And the person who chose the name that Sarah liked the best, um, because she thought outside of the uh, outside of the box, um, it was uh, quirky and uh, a bit different, was Caroline Panacea. That's what I'm, I'm deciding it is. It's double C. Panacea. And she came up with the side eye. And Sarah liked that because it looked like um, she was looking to the side. The, the eye. Um, so that's the one that we chose to be the name of uh, the block. So that will go on the pattern. The side eye. Okay. So well done you lot. Well done. So that's uh, the um, the things. We've had no new fabric in today. 
Oh yeah, we have. We haven't opened the boxes. So you never know. I could do a what's in the box tomorrow um, or this afternoon. So today, today's tutorial is going to be a mug bag. Now, I didn't have enough time to prep and do a whole one. So I've prepped, okay, and we are going to work through it together. Um, and hopefully it'll all um, come together. Now it's a mug bag and it's a, a little bag for you to put your mug in um, when you go to classes and things. So it's one of those things that I've been looking at for ages. Perhaps we should have done it more COVID time, you know, when we were first coming out of COVID. But a lot of these um, quilting classes or meetings and that that you go to, you have to take your own mug now. Um, so we're going to make a little bag for it to go in. Uh, I'm midway writing a pattern. Um, so uh, we'll we'll go through that at a later. Um, I'm midway through writing it. So if you do want the pattern, if you just hang on a little bit. Okay, so it's a little bag and then there's a bit that comes up and over and it's got a pocket on it for your tea. Alright, so I'm going to talk you through this. Okay, so let's go back to overhead, which I think is the two. Um, Girona, where's Girona, um, Jean? So, um, oh, warm and set, a windy Spain, lovely. Excellent. So you can see my pattern there. Um, let's go back to here. I um, Everybody. Hello. 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 Uh, 7 and 12. 7 and 12 on Thursday. Sarah is on. Um, I knew one of them was 12, but I couldn't couldn't remember which one. So there we go. Right. See, I'm trying to remember to look at that to read them. All right. Um, Bear with me. I get there in the end and then we'll stop doing them or something. Right, two, overhead. Right, I've started writing down bits. And we have, um, I've drawn, I drew it out. <laughs> I drew it out to, so that I could work out where all my lines and things are going to go. Okay, so the actual length of your front piece and lining piece are 17 and a half inches by five and a half inches and you want to round off one end okay now if you do it at the same time you know they're all going to be exactly the same um, or draw around something I used one of my circles to draw around okay so five and a half wide by 17 and a half long I wanted to use this fabric desperately wanted to use this fabric and then realized that it was directional and as we are going to the this goes like that I had to work out how I was going to make all of the bits be in the right direction now if I'd have been feeling particularly clever and had time, because I was busy this weekend with my birthday, um, I would have tried to match it a little better. Okay, so you can see you've got one fabric going that way, oh, and the next one going that way, and then that one going that way, so that it it follows. But if you use a non-directional piece, then you just do it in in one piece. But in the pattern there will be the extra bits on how big you need to cut this so that it becomes 17 and a half when you've finished it. Does that make sense? You need a four and a half by eight piece for your pocket and it's just been folded down and um, folded right sides together and then stitched all the way around and then when it's back out the right way, it's top stitch there. And I'm going to top stitch round it on three to hold it in place. Now I'm going to do that now before we go on to do anything else. Okay. Let's put 
that there. All right, so I'm gonna go back over to the machine and I'm gonna sew this in place. So number four for the machine. Now, you don't necessarily need to do it at quarter of an inch. I've got the quarter inch foot on. So we're gonna take it down and I'm gonna use, um, see this, uh, the wider foot. I'm going to go halfway on there. And we're going to lock stitch that. There's my thingy. And then we're going to go down and around the three sides. Okay. Now, there's my gap for turning. So I folded down my um, my seam allowance. And then I'm just going to close it now with my top stitch, which is one reason why you do the top stitching. Okay, so. And then up the other side. So you do this before you put it all together because you. Um, it's all inside then, okay? And it's not showing on the outside of the, um, it won't, the, this stitching won't show on the outside. Now, I've got a bit of elastic that I've put in there. I'm going to put that in the middle. So you're going to check. That's basically in the middle. I'm going to move it over just a tad, like that. And I'm going to base that, just put a few stitches in there to hold it in place. You under the seam allowance, just baste it in place so that it's you don't have to keep a pin in it then. Okay, so we can take all these pins out. Uh, where are we? Uh, two. Okay, so. Uh, you love the panda. I, th I just love this fabric. Absolutely. Hi, Iran. How are you doing? Right. Okay. So we're now going to put the... I've, I've done this. Now, you also have a handle, which is four by seven. Mine's shorter because I didn't um, decide on... I, I decided on a smaller one, but a seven will fit. Now, we're going to put that on after we've put it together because I think it's going to be more stable than if you just do it on this top top fabric okay so we're gonna put our two pieces right sides together like this and we are going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around and leave a gap here for us to turn things out. Now I'm going to take that off because I don't fancy trying to get um, trying to get it through um, with pins. So if you cut everything together, then um, if you cut it all together, you will find that uh, it all fits perfectly. But because I had to build my top piece, um, it becomes more of a, um, I can't think of the word, sorry. Um, it, because I had to build it, it, it doesn't, it's never going to be exactly the same. Um, I forgot to say, I've interfaced these two pieces, okay? I've interfaced them and then where I'm going to sew round and the um, elastic is, I've, I've reinforced it twice, okay? Um, I was really struggling for interfacing, which is why it's not the same size as my piece of fabric. I would normally put the, the interfacing on and then cut my fabric out, um, but I was really scrabbling around. I'm gonna have to take some home. Uh, really scrabbling around for interfacing. It was, um, it was quite funny, the bits that I've come up with 
um, the bits I've got in my bags, so you can see it's got part tuffet um, on. <laughs> it's got a tuffet on because I couldn't find any. Right, I am going to sew from here all the way round to there. Okay, so going back over to the machine. This fabric, Jean, is just beautiful. It's really lush. Right, I seem to be higher up here. Let's go in down a bit so that it fits. I seem to have, um, right, I'm just moving my fabric a little bit because I seem to have an awful lot at the top and not enough down the bottom. Let's go along here, otherwise I'm going to miss it with my quarter inch. So I'm just pinning, changing my pins. There you go, it fits now. Look at that. It's amazing what happens when you do it right. Okay, so we're going to start here. I'm going to make sure I've got a quarter inch. I'm going to finish my seam, you know, uh, lock stitch my seam properly because you're going to be pulling on it. And I'm going all the way around. Oh, okay. So we had a lovely weekend. Um, Phil and Sarah came, well, mostly Phil cooked for me. Um, uh, Sarah helped to prepare um, and we watched the coronation and then had um, uh, brunch together. So we had uh, lots of sausages and bacon and avocado and eggs and pancakes. It's just lush. So we sat and watched the coronation then until it finished. And then we, the sun had come out by then, which was lovely. So we sat in the garden and we just had, it was just a lovely day. We finished the day off um, sitting in the garden in the evening under a clear sky with a patio heater on and, and wrapped up in a couple of quilts. It's exactly what I wanted. And then on the Sunday, we, um, my son came up from the Mumbles, so we were uh, all together family-wise then. And then um, I had friends from Birmingham come yesterday, so that was lovely. Right, okay, so I've gone all the way round, okay, like this. And we are going to, um, if I can find them, we are going to turn the phone off so you can't hear it. I'm um, going to trim these corners, the curves. Okay, now I rushed through this, so I'm just checking that I've caught on the bottom as well. Yeah, and we're going to cut off the corners there. Okay, you get a sharper corner if you trim off your corners. All right. And there. And we're going to turn this out and hope that I've done it right. Okay. So we're going through here and just pulling it through birthing it. Right. I'm losing some of the um whatchamacallit interfacing has all come away and is all bunched up. So we're going to um through this. Oh, it's all right. I forgot to turn the iron on. I'm going to go round now and push the corners out. 
and my curves and everything. Oh, that's what I forgot to do. I forgot to put the um, Velcro on. Never mind, we'll have to do it now. Now you can either top stitch the, um, you can either top stitch your, uh, or, um, no, whip stitch your bag to this bit here or put Velcro on, okay? Now you could just go through and um, sew it so that it doesn't come off or you can um, stick some Velcro on. So there we have our outer wrap as it were like that. Now you could, I'm going to put in measurements for you to go through and you could sew where it's supposed to bend okay so that's going to come up here and then that will go over like that okay so you could sew it so that it's a definite bend I worked out where it needed to go and I will put that in I'm not sure that we're going to do it but we will have a look now I'm going to go back over to the ironing. Hiya Marion, how are you? Uh, are we on three? I think that's forward front. Forward front, you might as well look at me then a blank board. So we're just folding in my seam allowance. I'm giving it a bit of a press. Okay. So you could make this to match your Tron, your mini ironing caddy, that would be quite nice. Um, you could have, a, you know, make your Jeeves bag. Have you heard about the Jeeves bag? That might be um, something to do. I'm not sure whether we did it as a Zoom course or, or whether we did it, no, I think we did it in class before COVID. Um, the Jeeves bag will carry all your, it's big enough to carry one of these um, ironing cutting boards in it and um, will carry all your rulers and stuff when you go into class. Um, I made mine using orphan blocks which I thought was quite a, a good way of using your blocks. Right, I want that to fold in trying to fold all this in so that it's all the same same width here I think they've got the plus I've got the classic FM on which is supposed to it's supposed to listen to uh, dull the sound or something and uh, they're doing the dance of the sugar plum fairy and I uh, I just want to start dancing. You always want to do the the pirouette thing going through. This doesn't want to work. So you're going to fold your seam allowance in. Sometimes it's worth doing before you turn it out the other way. You know, fold it back because at least then you know you've got it right. I'm in trouble here. We're going to do that. And I'm going to stick a pin in that before I let it go this time. There we go. And we're going to top stitch all the way round the outside. Okay, so back to here. So we're going to, like before, we're going to do a eighth of a eighth of an inch all the way round just hold everything in if I can get that all to sit correctly 
There we go. So I can hear Jonah telling Josh off. So we're going a bit of a lock stitch and then we're going to top stitch this in place like that. Right, if I take that upper, there you go. So it's not long to Malvern. It's amazing how fast this year is actually going when you when you sit down and think. We're already into the first week of May. We're going all the way around. We're trying to secure um, dates now for more classes. So keep an eye on our socials because we'll be doing um, more uh, classes so you'll be able to put your names down for them. Uh, so Sean will uh, let, us know, uh, let you know once we've decided on the classes and uh, the dates, we'll probably do a tough it, another Tuffet class. So if you want to go on it, it might be worth letting, reminding us now that we're doing it. It'll probably be October. I think we decided on the Tuffet class would be October. So I don't know if you're there, Katie. You wanted to go on the Tuffet course, but you couldn't because of the baby. I'm assuming you've had the baby by now. And, um, so October should be brilliant to be able to leave the baby with um, somebody else. There we go. So we've top stitched all the way round. Now. Um, the Velcro, oh camera, the Velcro would, now you would um, measure, like this, like that, you would measure from, from the straight end, if you measure five inches, right, from the end, there, we would put one piece of um, Velcro, sorry, other way, five inches from there. One piece of Velcro would go here, okay, and then the next piece of Velcro would go there. All right, so you would lay your Velcro pieces here, like that. And then you will put um, the other two pieces, the corresponding pieces, on the bottom of the bag. All right. So that's um, the wrap. Now our handle is going to be thirteen inches from thirteen inches. Which way are we going? That way. Thirteen inches approximately <coughs> from the straight end is going to be there and we are going to put our handle there all right so I want a little bit of a, a give now probably uh a wider one, seven seven inches wider, would give you a. It would then sit on the edges, and it probably will lift better. I've lost a pin. Like that. So we've just done that, and I'm just going to put in a couple of lines on either side to uh, hold it in place. So 
So with the handle, it's um, we've done this type of thing before, and what we would do is um, we would um, uh, have your four inches wide, and you would uh, fold into the middle long ways. Uh, lengthways you would fold into the middle open it out fold it in half open it out and then you would um, uh, oh, it's got stuck. Um, and then you would fold your raw edges in again which we've done hundreds of times with uh, handles I'm going to go down here like that. So, what are you lot watching on the telly? We've been watching Ted Lasso. We've finally caught up now, and I have to wait weekly. Sarah will tell you I don't do well with weekly. I like to binge watch. I'm a binger in all sorts of things. So we're coming along here. So where are we now? Okay, so I've just put the handle on. Okay, so we now have a handle. Look at that. So we're going to put this to one side now. Now because I've put in a lock stitch, I'm just going to chop those off. Um, if you use a uh, a needle you can bury those ends inside which is always ends up neater so there we go so we have that now you need a bag here's one I've made earlier I've done the lining okay so we have used these are where's my bits these are, I don't know what size they are, these are seven by eight and a half, yeah, seven by eight and a half. Now, your seven is your width, so you need to remember if you're using a um, directional fabric like I am here, you need to make sure that it's going the right way, all right? And then on either side, your lining and your front, the outside bits, you need to put um, interfacing on. Then on the outside pieces, I've also put a bit of um, wadding, okay, fusible wadding. It's not very thick. I'm not sure whether I would um, put some bosel in there from the mug. Now, I would also measure your mug i have some mugs that this this bag is not big enough for okay so um you need to measure your mug to make sure that um it's going to fit now we are going to sew these down three sides the side bottom side okay to make sure so I'm going to use uh, another quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to sew all the way around those three sides okay so we're going to do this here I'm going to lock the top of the side and go all the way around what are you all working on? I know you put up um, posts for uh, when Sean puts up a what did you work on at the weekend? But what are you working on? I saw a couple, I think Carolyn had a 
um, a craft fair this week. I saw some of her uh, bunting done with the diggers and um, caution tape ones. I thought those looked very good, Carolyn. I thought they looked very cool. So we're going to cut off the corners. No, we're not. No, we're not, because we're going to box the corner. Now, I boxed the corner at an inch and then decided I wanted it a little bit wider. So I took it up another quarter of an inch. So we're going to do an inch and a quarter on this one. So you're going to put your hand in while it's still round the uh, inside out. And you need to make sure that the side seam marries up with the bottom seam. Okay, like that. And we're going to mark an inch in, an inch and a quarter in, okay. So I always measure from my stitches, okay, because your corners are slightly different on each one. So I'm going to find the end of my stitches, it's here somewhere, there, and I'm going to measure an inch and a quarter up. I'm going to line one of my lines up with my stitch line. Okay, so that way you've got a better hope of it all being straight. So there we go. Like that. Oh, camera, camera. Let's do that again, shall we? Right, you're going to, with your bag inside out, you're going to marry up your seams. So your bottom seam and one of your side seams, you're going to make sure that they're sitting on top of each other. And I measured up a quarter of an inch from there up. Okay? A, a, an inch and a quarter up. And I've marked a line. And I'm going to sew across that line. All right? I'll show you again on the other side now. I'm not caught on the wad in here. <laughs> okay. So, somebody is crocheting the Christmas Eve Wishes Blanket. We've not seen that one. That's Jane. And uh, tracing 150 pieces for an FPP quilt. Oh, I would imagine that it would take a lot longer than you'd think. Right, there we go. So, we're going back over to here. So, I've taken this and I am marrying up my... Um, my seams okay so that I know that it's pretty pretty central and then on the end of my stitch line I'm going to measure up an inch and a quarter from there and I'm going to line up one of my lines see the strong line against my um against against my sewing line okay so we've gone up an inch and a quarter that's there okay and I'm just marking that like that hopefully it's exactly the same as the one that we've just done over here looks bigger but hey so I'm now going to sew on that line hope that makes sense going to so again on this line you could change your foot so the um, the, gu the guide is not catching on the wadding and there we go all right 
right. Now, quite often I'll leave these bits. Quite often I'll leave these bits and make sure that one goes up and one goes down. But we're going to chop them off. Now, if you don't like doing it that way, you could cut um, an inch and a quarter out of the corner. So, say that's your bag flat, you could an inch and a quarter and then cut that out and then when you when you put these two um, seams together this will meet in a line it'll meet in that line um, that might be the way that you prefer to do it but yeah right we are going to turn this out the right way okay now if you wanted to put your velcro on you would now work out you would now put them on here okay um, you could probably sew them on before you put this in but I've not looked at that or sew them by hand so where you would have your see where those lines were that's going to sit there like that so you would velcro them or you could um, when it's all done you could uh, just whip stitch that to the thing right stop wittering Sarah we are now going to put our outside bag inside our inside bag now you can leave a gap in your lining seam for turning it out but as i'm going to top stitch the top of my bag at the end we are just going to do it all in one go now i have married up my seam so we're still on the right camera yeah i have one seam there on my outside bag and a seam on my inside lining bag and we are going to marry those up like that and pop a pin in it i'm going to turn around and we're going to marry up these seams and pop a pin in it like that ow pin pinned me okay and then we're just going to go along here i'm going to put one pin there and another pin there which is where i'm going to use to turn out i do that because i forget you see my tough it piece you're not going to see it at the end of it so i figured it would be all right okay so we are going to sew from here all the way round at the quarter inch in fact we might do slightly larger than quarter inch i'm going to change the foot so that it's not getting caught on anything And I'm going to use slightly bigger than the quarter inch. I'm going to use edge of foot. Ooh. Another reason for making your bag a bit bigger. Is it going to go on there? Oh, it's only just going to fit. Okay. So we're going to go edge of foot can you see I'm do, using edge of this foot on there it's if I'm not quite um, dead on uh, with my pinning them together you're more likely to catch it okay so let's see whether this works I'm 
still on a three because Sarah's Sarah's um, machine is not liking all the thicknesses. Really need to come up with some thin, thin projects, don't we? Right. So. Might have been worth making instead of it being seven inches wide, make it a little bit wider than that. Okay, so we've gone all the way round. Where are we? Number two. We've gone all the way round. So now we're going to try and get the bag out of this little, little, little hole. Um. Bearing in mind we've got quite a bit of padding on here. I should probably have left a bigger hole. Okay. Oh, I think this is going to work. I can get it through. So it's pushing the lining inside now. Like that. Okay, so we now have our bag. Look at that. Now there are other ways of making these bags. Um, you could sew the bits of fabric together on the, um, you know, two bits of fabric along that, l that line, the top line and then sew them down down the edges that would work um, if you've made these bags but you know bags before you would be able to work it out which is your preferred um, way of doing it okay so we'll just roll in the seams to get them to sit and we are going to top stitch it is it? I have no idea what time it is. What's the time, people? There's me stitching on. Okay, so we've gone all the way around here. We're going to just fold that under, tuck that in. That's our thread end. And we're going to top stitch all the way around here. And then we're done, pretty much. Okay, ten two. Blimey, I've been talking for ages. Right. Okay. So we're going to top stitch it this way round because uh, I don't have to get it all underneath the machine again. So we're going to pick a bit on my um, on my foot. And we're going to go all the way around the edge, making sure that it all goes together. So do you all take mugs with you to class? Or, um, or do you do mugs that are, are in within your halls? I always find the ones that are in the hall never quite big enough. You make a really good cup of tea. You know when you make a really good cup of tea, but it's not big enough, and then you um, go to make another cup of tea, and it doesn't quite taste the same. I also find the mug denotes whether or not it's a good cup of tea as well sometimes. Okay. 
So we've top stitched that, coming to the end. Our bag is now sitting like that. And you're gonna fold this down so that you have a little bag like that. Now I would definitely need to make this bigger, I think. I think we might be changing um, our sizes. Now this then would sit here, okay, like that. So you would either sew your Velcro and then this bit will come up here. This bit, see a pocket for your um, uh, tea bags? And this is going to come up and over. If we pin that there, big pin, pin that there so that's holding it in place, okay? So it'll be like that. And then we're going to fold it up, fold it over like that. Just like that. And that would be where our button, which I have a panda button to go on. Our button would sit there. And you have your mug bag. How cool is that? I think. I need to move where my let's move that forward a bit. So that's sitting probably seam on seam would probably be the best place for that. Like that. There you go, that's better. Your button would go there and you would have your bag. So there's your bag. See? How cool is that? It looks so pretty in this. And I, because I have um, changed the direction of my fabrics, um, you've got our pandas are sitting upright. I could have done a better job of um, working out my direction and maybe now it's all finished and I'm looking at it maybe I would have this piece to come up to here so this is all one in one direction because I've got an upside down tiger there but yeah it worked or use a non-directional fabric it would be so much easier <laughs> so there you go so you have your just drop my mug. You have your mug there, like that. Of course, that. I thought it was cool anyway. So there we go. That's Tuesday all done and dusted. I am going to go back over the shop and um, finish a few bits, and we will see. I will see you next week. Now I don't know whether you noticed a lady had put up a post um, to do uh, these scrappy hearts, and you do two the same. Um, for a charity. I'm going to do that next Thursday, show you how to do that um, and we'll go through all the um, where you send it to and everything um, while we do it. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do next week and I will see you soon. You meet at a lady's house so that we can use her cuts. Well, maybe you need to make her one for, a, you know, just as a, as a present. Um, so we can, um, there you go, I'm done. Have a lovely uh, week. I mean, we're already halfway through. So have a lovely week and I'll see you next week. All right, don't forget to watch Sarah. Bye.